Growing up, I found myself between cultures and multiple subcultures. In a way, lost. I think my young mind was confused by this. Maybe the confusion remained throughout my life. One culture I primarily grew up around, and the other was that of my mother's. I also see the two cultures being similar to two literary styles. The culture I grew up in was more black and white. It seems to me much more of a realism perspective, like in the arts or literature, but mostly in mindset. My mother's culture was of Louisiana and much more similar in my mind to Latin or South American magical realist. In this and the next episodes, I will take a look at that. We moved several times as I was growing up, so I was able to see other examples of realist subcultures as well. Also, there was something alluring about South America while I was growing up and remained an attraction to me throughout my life. It had its own magical realism. I once took an American studies class in which I read Hunger of Memory by Richard Ramirez. Richard was from a Mexican-American family. He became a Fulbright scholar, one of the most prestigious scholarships in the world. He would attend the universities of Stanford, Columbia, and was a doctoral candidate in English Renaissance literature at University of California, Berkeley. These are some of the most elite universities anywhere. His autobiography talks about how he lost his Mexican-American culture and connection by becoming academic. His story is about his loss in this. I related strongly to the book. Though I didn't lose a culture, I just never felt like I had one. The realism culture didn't include me completely because I was Polish. And growing up in realism culture caused me to think too independently to ever live among my family in Louisiana. I believe Richard was like me in that the academic culture he became involved in was one of realism, and he had come from one of magical realism, but was no longer part of that. My first two years of life, I lived in California, at first around San Francisco. It is interesting to me that this was the time that San Francisco was the center of the beatniks and the hippie movement, also known as the counterculture movement. The beatniks were a rebellious movement against the norms of society. They would often get together at cafes and discuss such things as literature and art, typically that which applied to their movement. The beatniks adopted some Eastern thinking or the influence of Buddhism, Hinduism, and even socialism. They were non-materialist as they felt materialism was an addiction and downfall of the American culture. Many of them would go on to become hippies. The beatnik movement began long before the hippies. The hippies were an even greater rebellion against the establishment. In some ways, it was a complete rebellion. They often had complete distrust for the older generations. It is interesting to me that I was in the center of the two movements while I was a toddler because when I was 15 years old, we moved to Eugene, Oregon. Eugene at the time was a focal point of the hippie movement. Both of these movements had as their base realism, but moved, as I see it, towards a magical realistic way of thinking. Even though they rebelled against realism, it was their base. It is how they were taught. I was about a year and a half old when we moved to Orange County, just south of Los Angeles. For several months, we moved in with my mother's mother, as my father would often be out to sea. My grandmother had temporarily left my grandfather and moved away from Louisiana. Five of her children joined her. Their ages were 16 to 24. I sort of remember this time. I remember each of them 
as being amazingly easygoing, never moody. Throughout my life, I have found this to be true with my mother's family, always supportive with good advice. They were never mean, condescending, and always considerate. They were always very friendly. They were not based in realism and more similar to magical realism, or at least as I have experienced. My experience of realism is that it is accompanied by a lack of warmth, and South American magical realism is not. Of course, that generalizes it, is not the case for every person, but I found a fairly strong correlation. This has given me the belief that this time frame with my mother's family was, I think, the most enjoyable time of my life. I say that as that is what I remember and I believe to be true. It was the only time I was surrounded by people like that for any period of time. I think my very young mind knew there was something very different about my mother and her family, something very special. When I was two, we moved to the country of Panama as my father was stationed there. I've covered in previous episodes my experiences there. We only stayed for two and a half years. I don't know if I picked up much of the local culture, maybe although I was mostly around families of men in the U.S. Navy. We lived across the street from the jungle, and to me, all things were possible in the jungle. It hadn't been fully explored, and I seemed to understand this. I looked back at the jungle in a magical, realistic way. Anything I believed might exist in that jungle. All the rest of my years, I spent growing up in the U.S. There was nothing like the jungle. Nothing had the possibilities the jungle had. This reinforced in my mind the ideal of realism in the U.S. and magical realism throughout Latin and South America. After Panama, for a short time we moved to the city of Pittsburgh. My experience in Pittsburgh were generally good. It was more of a mixture of peoples. My grandparents, my father's parents, lived there. I always had a great time with them. I was fascinated with the city and loved to explore it with my grandparents. Large cities aren't as great as the jungle for me, but still lend themselves to a number of possibilities in considering what might be. When we moved away from Pittsburgh, we would often return. There was more there to expand my mind than other places I lived. There was more history in the area than other places I've lived. The areas I was most exposed to were a melting pot of people of Eastern European, Italian, and Irish descent. The people were friendly, not as friendly as my mother's family, but friendlier than other realist places, such as Northern Europe or other parts of the U.S. that I've been. I did not go to school there, so I didn't have as much of a chance to understand the culture. 